No lust of result. None. Do what you do because you love to do it and for no other reason and do it with all of your might. The Bible says whatever your hands finds to do, do it with all of your might. And it also says, I'm going to go back to that hope in a minute. Hope is the thing of uh, who Paul said that, things not yet seen. Okay, hope, I mean the Bible also says, let not your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Okay? Let not your right hand know what your left hand is doing. Hmm. Paula, what does that mean? Woo, that's so esoteric. What does that mean? That's what it means. Okay? You are not... to contrive, manipulate, coerce, influence, condition, control. Okay. All of these words, every single one of them, contriving, manipulating, coercing, influencing, conditioning, and controlling, they come from the word if you're hoping for something, you are contriving something to get it. If you're hoping for something, you're trying to manipulate circumstances, situations, people, or events to have the outcome to be what you want it to be. If you are hoping for something, you think you're co coercing, getting people to join in, agree with you. Say, you know that, uh, Sally, I used that word the other day. Sally, Sally is a terrible person, and you know she needs to be talked to, and we need to go tell her to do this or do that or the other. That's coercion. You're getting people to agree with you. Influence. You're making a statement and you're making the other people, person or people or whoever, whomever to feel uncomfortable if they do not um, agree with you. You are feeling so insecure in your own whatever topic it is that you feel like you have to influence someone else. This one right here, well this one you can't hardly help so much. You can break it down and get rid of it, but you have been conditioned since the day you were born, before you were born. You come in here with a certain amount of conditioning. And <clears throat> like I said, on one of those shows, we, one line out of a book was, you know, all conditioning is um, pretty much futile, or whatever it was, wasted effort. Control. You don't control anything, not even yourself. Okay, now, like I said, I usually pull something out of this, this little teeny box to show that everything in life is connected not a single solitary event is disconnected so let's see what this is how it has to do with whatever we've been talking about let's see um, if you're afraid to turn it loose it has already turned you loose ah so that would say get rid of hope, get rid of hope that it's going to be any different than what it is. Stop worrying about whether he's going to leave you or not. He's already gone. You might see him walk through the door, but he's already gone. Now, the other thing that I've added to the show, because I am an artist, and I never talk about that. You know, I've written several books um, mode of Cosmic Therapy, Esoteric Psychoanalytic Map of Astrological Houses. It's available on Amazon. All my books are. Uh, this is the information that I garner and use when I'm on the show 
The subject of desire. The subject of desire. Uh, that's all I ever talk about. And mode of cosmic therapy through art. That's the one thing that I leave out, that I'm an artist. And so I'm going to start focusing on art. And if you go to the site, the website, like I said, you can take a glimpse of mode of cosmic therapy. And what you do is I have, golly, so many different pictures there, and you choose one. You just choose one, and then you'll look it up, and whatever that little paragraph is, is pertaining to you. Like, whew, this one. Let's see, Mitzi, what we have. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece right here. I think um, the name of this one, I don't have it on here, but I think this one is the Code of Entrance. Hmm, I like that. What you're trying to do, Code of Entrance. Yes, there is a code. There is a code. We carry that code. How is it discerned? How is that code to the entrance of ourselves obtained? You know, because if you know the, um, what's those things at school? The locker numbers, I mean the, help me out here, Mitzi, what's the locks? Yeah, what are they called? Yeah, combination locks. Thank you, honey. What is the combination to the lock that can open up our locker? What is that combination? Do we have a code? Yes. Can we open it? Yes. Can we get find out what that code is? Yes. Well, how do we do that? How do we find out what code we have? Well, you know, first of all, what I'm going to see. i got to see what this number is. I mean, what this, this nitrogen is. So we've got 9, 13, 18. Hmm, how about that? Let me do it again. This is funny. 3, 6 is 9, 13. It is 18, Mitzi. So it's the moon, 9, 13, 18. Moon. What is the moon? The mother. Tells us a lot. I mean, a whole lot. And it's also psychological journey. That's our code. But anyway, here's how you, you get to the code. The code of yourself. So you can get on with the program. Here's how it's done. By your name, your birth date, a whole lot of other things too, but this is the code. I'm just talking about a code, okay? Talking about a code. I'm talking about your name, and that's your whole name on your birth certificate. Okay? Because that didn't just come about. Let me see. Rachel, Rachel, golly, Marie, Sanders, whoever she is, all right? This is the beginning of her code, and she can break it down by using numerology. She'll have to go through it. Then she's born on a certain day. She's born on 2 14 75 okay? That's another code that she combines these two to find out her particular code. She will also include where she was born. That's very important, where she was born. That's part of it. It's not all of it, but you can start there. If you're interested, if you don't, and you, you don't have to think there's anything to it. It can just entertain you. It does me. Let me see. <clears throat> you work so hard at trying to have the things the way you like them. You work so hard at trying to have the things the way that you like them. Order, punctuality, neatness, honesty, intelligence, and of course, duty. All well and good, 
But whatever happened to originality, spontaneity, gaiety, wit, charm, capriciousness, trying so hard to be good and kind, you end up being inconvenient and unnatural. Inconvenient. Inconvenient would mean you're doing things you don't want to do for reasons that you think are making you appear to be a good person. So you end up being inconvenient. Inconvenient. And I always think to yourself, inconvenient to yourself. See, because one of my most favorite sayings is, um, you've got to be natural and convenient. And this is talking about being inconvenient and, and natural. So if you are inconvenient, you are not home. No matter if somebody's knocking on the door, you're not home. And no matter if you're responding to their questions and you're engaged in the conversation, you're not there. So you end up doing something like saying you want to go somewhere when you really don't, when some action you're going to do is going to show that you don't want to go. It's going to come out without you. You're inconvenient. And you're unnatural. And what in the world is worse than unnatural? Have you ever been around somebody that you didn't know what to say to them because there was some kind of energy, energy emanating from them that put you off, that made you feel uncomfortable? And you couldn't put you, you know, you just didn't know how to um, bridge that gap. That's when somebody's being unnatural. They're not being themselves. They're, they have assumed a role for so long, they don't even know they are. Let me see. You are by nature a shaker and a mover. You usually don't settle for status quo. That is unless you are doing something for ulterior motives. Ah, belch. Hmm, give me a break. Stop being so cardboard and plastic in your actions. It certainly does not become you. We are talking about hope. Stop being so cardboard and plastic in your actions. It does not become you. What was that? Anyway, two, five, three, four. So we get this, this young lady's got a net 11. So we know, see, before we go any further, before we go one step further looking into her code, we know that she is divided. We know that. We also know that she has, well, she ain't going to want to hear this, but she has voices, strong voices, that speak to her or him, or well, in this case her, all the time. Because her sense of futility is a little grander than the rest of people's. Their sense of futility is a little bit more grand than the rest of people because they can see through things without all of the hoopla, but they usually end up joining the crowd and doing something that is totally unnatural. Here it is unnatural and inconvenient. So they end up being a cardboard copy instead of authentic. Well, is that what it was, 11? 11, she was 11. Okay, maybe I can go ahead and take it a little further. I don't like this one either. Didn't show up good. Okay, what was her name? Rachel? Let's do Rachel first. Rachel. So we got a 9, 1, 3, 8, 5, 3. We got a 6, 12, 23. Oh, no. Look here. I'm not saying, oh, no. Because it's wonderful if she's willing to delve into and find out her code of entrance. It's wonderful. 
12, 23, and 6. She's got a 29, 11. This young lady needs some deep investigation in order to understand why, like Paul said, I don't do the things I'm supposed to do and do the things, and the things I want to do, I don't do. This girl is doubly divided, unsure, and easily, easily influenced. Remember always with this number, easily influenced, which would, could bring some problems with the law, it would certainly bring problems with the mother because the mother is the leading influence in a child's life and so there's going to be rebellion there because she's trying to be her own person and yet she wants to please, okay? Because remember when I said the number two was a peacemaker? Hmm? Well, 11 is the higher vibration of two. So she really wants to please everybody. And it's impossible. You can't do it. Okay, this 29 in the I Ching, which is an H, Xi Jing is the correct way to say it. But I like to say I Ching because we do. We Ching, we Ching, we Ching. But anyway, 29 in the I Ching is the abyss. And falling into the abyss, well, we have to be really, really careful crossing the abyss because there's all kinds of our fears, all kinds of our insecurities, all kinds of the things that we have been conditioned to believe. And we have to separate from ourselves those things that are really true in us and those things that belong to someone else. What was her middle name? Maybe I'll get it on before. I go out. Marie. Well, her name starts with a 13. This is death and transformation. Now, that does not, for all of those who are thinking I'm talking about she's going to die, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about anybody that has an M has to go through repeated deaths throughout their life. They have to peel back their layers constantly. 